Yes, I'ma feel, but I don't wanna go if you ain't with me. Let's make a home, be all alone. So tell me, baby, where would you like to go? Maybe we'll drive from coast to coast, only to where we love the most. I'm taking you to paradise, paradise. I'm so tired of living life in gray, baby. And you deserve to see the world. So tell me, baby, where would you like to go? Maybe we'll drive from coast to coast. Everybody, uh, lips are a bit dry. Nothing around here. Wait, hang on, hang on. Hey, everybody! It's the beginning of another vlog. Uh, all the footage that you've seen is probably going to be a montage with music playing in the back. This is the first time I'm actually speaking in this vlog, and it is the end of the day uh, from what you were seeing in the morning with me packing the berries and all of that and getting sort of things situated for the day. If you hear anything going in the back, it is my washing machine. Today was the day where we wash all the blankets. Tandy was here today. Tandy's amazing. You know, I love Tandy and Tandy loves me and that lady a lot. And um, we love her too, a lot. <laughs> so today was her like literally helping me out with blankets, all the blankets that I wrap myself up with when I'm sitting on the couch, the tiny little blankets, fleeces, all of that. That's what's going in the machine right now. Uh, one of them is what's going on in the machine right now. I just put some meat in the oven. I've got salads and all of that, so I really don't need to um, have anything with that meat. What I have in the oven is lamb chops. I'm, I'm a very big fan of lamb. I love, 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 love lamb. They can be nothing else in my fridge except lamb and chicken, and I'm happy. And I'm a happy, happy girl. Uh, what I wanted to show you, I've been editing. If you look at back there, back there at the table there, uh, I have been sitting and editing my first installment of Advice with Cat, which is, um, it's... I, I feel like I've responded to those answers so well that I'm actually really, really excited for this installment. And in the last vlog, I showed you guys that I had done my nails. <laughs> shortly after I filmed this vlog, shortly before I started filming this vlog, one of the nails broke and it was this one. So it was this one. This tiny pinky nail had broken. So I decided to just go and touch it up. And now the colors, there's two colors on my nails, as you can see. There's that color there, and then the color that I had before. <laughs> so I had to pretty much touch up everything. I broke this nail when I was at my partner's place over the weekend, and we were playing PS, PlayStation Tekken. And uh, I won against the big boss, and I got so excited, like, ah, jumping up and down, and I broke my nail. Somehow I broke my nail. I don't know how it happened. But anyway, so while I was there, I discovered another Ina Parman spice that I didn't know existed. He had it because he cooks quite a lot. So he had it and I lost my shits because if you remember correctly, Robertson's, not this, this is parsley, but Robertson's had a spice that came in the brown uh, boxes. Yeah, brown onion. It was a brown onion spice. Now, I used to love that spice. I would add it to every single meat that I cook. 
now it's gone i think they discontinued the spice and whatever really really broken about it so so hurt about it then i went to my partner's place over the weekend and he uses inner palmen spices and um on that saturday when i broke my nail we were chilling at home and i decided to make uh borovos rolls for um dinner and i came across this and i lost my marbles when i added it to the borovos rolls i lost my marbles because it tasted exactly like the robertson's brown onion spice this is just known as the roast onion soup and gravy powder so that's what it looks like so with this one i lost my craps because i i didn't believe it i didn't believe that inner palmen had this and so i'm so excited because it reminds me so much of the brown onion spice and i just added this to my lamb that's in the oven right now um, just with some salt pepper a little bit of salt because these ones are often packed with salt so i literally just go <laughs> on salt that's it a lot of pepper and parsley and that's that's honestly all i did i didn't have uh fresh parsley so i added this which is fine it's not the end of the world it's just going to be meat and salads and um that's pretty much it I am now gonna head upstairs in the next five minutes or so because I'm gonna show you what I picked up from Volps or Volpes or Volpes or whatever Volps sells linen. It's your linen store. Um, and I'll show you what I picked up from there. That's my machine. So we need to go upstairs. I'll show you what I picked up from there so that I can change up my... Yeah, I am tired. I'm actually filming on... A very special day it's my mother's birthday today and normally on my mother's birthday i take some time off work i take an off uh because it's just it's just one of those days that i'd like to have to myself to remember my mom think about my mom all that kind of stuff um but it also happens to be a day where i just want to I don't know, I just want to do things that remind me of my mom. My mom used to love to cook, my mom used to love to clean, my mom used to love to keep her house in order. It was that kind of thing. So I, I do that a lot now. Uh, typically I would normally spend this day with my sister, um, but my sister <clears throat> and I are busy filming right now as we speak. So normally we'll reserve it to the weekend and we'll do something together over the weekend so I'm sitting here because <sighs> can you tell how tired I am so this is the home of linen I went to Volps uh, or Volpies or Volpes whatever it is that you want to call it I went there the other day to pick up new pillows now I'm somebody who doesn't change my pillows as often as I should the pillows that I've had Oh, this is terrible, but I've probably had them for over five years. <clears throat> and I've reached a stage where I'm actually really tired of um, continental pillows. And now I want to just do standard pillows, standard, standard, king. That's how I want to roll now. And I got these last week, Friday or something, and today's Tuesday. And I haven't been able to, you know, because I was away over the weekend and... I was at work yesterday and then here we are today so i'm here now to take these out set up my bed it might not be the way that i want it to look but i'm gonna walk you through that process and then as time goes we'll change it around and all of that so i picked up two kings which are gonna sit at the back and then i've already got four standards on my bed right now uh but i picked up two new fresh standards that i could rest my head on at night because I feel like the ones that I have are just not they're not it anymore so I wanted to show you that ah, these are the kings this is one of the kings that I picked up this is a luxury microfiber 50 by 90 uh, king pillow medium support luxurious soft feels like down and non-allergenic which is great i think we love that we do um hand wash do not bleach do not tumble dry blah 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 i'm gonna put them straight onto my bed because i want to sleep comfortably tonight okay so i picked up two of these 
use that one. And we got two standards. And for me, I prefer anything from medium to firm support when it comes to standard because when it's too soft, I really, I just can't. I can't when it's too soft. So I picked up the standard one. Um, <clears throat> Vops is running a special and I hope that the special will still be running by the time you see this video. It is running a special. This, the, let me see. Where's the slip chair? There it is. Let me see. So we had, nope, that's the wrong slip. Okay. Okay, I can't find it. But I believe that the standards were 250 for one, and then the second standard was half off. So that is a great, great, great um, sale on a pillow. So <clears throat> got the one for 250 and got the other one for 125. And then with the kings, I think the kings were 290, just under 300 bucks, and I got the second king for half of that so it's a really really great sale and if you can if you need new pillows go and pick it up do yourself a favor and then of course because i do not own king pillows i had to get uh white pillowcases for the kings and then i also ended up picking up a linen mist which is in moroccan rose it smells absolutely heavenly it's so so good Oh, that smells relaxing. Ah, so this is what I'm going to spray on my linen every morning when I get up. And maybe about an hour before I go to bed. It smells absolutely fresh. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Moroccan rose, heaven scent. Use while, okay, use while or after ironing your linen uh, to sleep wear for soft freshness. Spray flat before making your bed and spray uh, on your bed just before night time. So we got it. We got it. So I'm going to go to my bedroom just now and set up these pillows and see. I'm going to show you what's on the bed right now. And then I'm going to show you an after. Because I've got problems, I bought more books. Now, this one was the one that was downstairs. And you will see this in my reading video which probably is up already so this one was downstairs i bought it a long time ago this is tiny changes remarkable results atomic habits by james clear i think we've all heard about atomic habits i'm not going to get into it i don't want to get into any of these books to be honest um <clears throat> and these two i found for 69 bucks at um bargain books one is a woman is no man by etf rum and it talks about it speaks to palestine in 1990 17 year old isra prefers reading books to entertaining suitors her father has chosen for her over the course of a week the naive and dreamy girl finds herself quickly betrothed and married and is soon living in brooklyn there isra uh, struggles to adapt to the expectations of her oppressive mother-in-law farida and strange new husband adam a pressure that intensifies as she begins to have children. Four daughters instead of the sons, Farida tells Isra she must bear. Wow. Nice, nice. And nice. this is uh, Empty Houses by Brenda Navarro, one of the best kept secrets of Mexican literature. Um, so it is a book of short stories which follows, I believe... No, it's not short stories. I'm lying. Hang on. Uh, one of which there's a child's disappearance. The mother is distraught. Um, <clears throat> and then she begins to unravel a little bit thinking about did she want him in the first place. And then the other story is in a working class neighborhood um, environment on the other side of Mexico City, another woman protects her stolen child. After longing desperately to be a mother, her life is violently disrupted by the reality. Sounds really good. Alternating between their two contrasting voices, Empty Houses confronts the desire, regrets, and social pressures of motherhood. Okay, it's not a short story. It's just a book that follows the life of two mothers. Uh, one who has um, 
lost a child due to disappearance and the other one who has stolen a child so this is really really interesting i can't wait really really tiny short short novel can't wait and then one that i repurchased because i couldn't find my copy in 2015 a friend of mine les and i buddy read a little life by hanya yanagahara and i think i've spoken about this book I don't know if it was on my channel or if on, on my other social platforms where I was discussing this book, but it seems to be the craze on TikTok and all of that. The reason why I picked up A Little Life is because when I read it in 2016 with um, Les, I didn't finish it because it was such a disturbing novel. Really, really disturbing. If you want to know more about it, please Google it. Please go onto TikTok. Please do this. You will know. Um, but I read about, you know, the four friends, uh, more specifically concentrated on Jude. And out of the 720 plus pages, I read about 440 and I had to put it down. And I told Liz that I just couldn't do it anymore because wow, wow, wow. But <clears throat> Hanya Yanagahara has just recently launched another book, released another book called Lost Paradise, I think, but it only comes out in South Africa at the end of March. So I thought in the meantime, I could finish this, reread and finish it. The writing in this is so small and it's already a chunky monkey, but um, I feel like I'm in, I, I'm in a stronger place to read it now and I want to read it so that it can prep me for Lost Paradise, even though the stories are not connected in any way. But I, I just I just picked it up because I really want to reread it. And Les has kindly, kindly um, offered to reread it with me. And then we're going to pick up Lost Paradise. So I hope he doesn't mind. He probably does, but, you know, he's always nice to me and everything. We've been friends for a really long time. So I'm going to reread it. When? I don't know. Am I going to do a vlog about it? Probably not. It really is a disturbing book. Not one that I would recommend, really. Uh, but uh, I want to reread it and finish it. Because right now I feel like I'm an avid reader. I can do it. I can do the 720 plus pages. Right, now I'm busy with the meat downstairs, so I need to get moving on this. Um, let's go set up the bedroom, okay? Right. So this is pretty much the bed right now. Uh, so what I want to change are those two at the back. I'm kind of over the whole continental, uh, but one of the guest bedrooms doesn't have continental pillows. So I'm going to take it and put them that side. And then we're going to have the two kings at the back and then the two, two, two standards, right? So uh, typically for me, the ones in the front here are just for decorative purposes and the ones at the back are typically the ones that I sleep on and then we're going to have the kings at the back so I took out these because I want these on the bed and I'm going to remove that one and yeah let's set it up real quick go so I really really love this I'm so over the whole high up top up over there kind of set up I'm done I'm over it um, so basically I've got the Kings at the back here and then just to break the color and keep it sometimes I can do it all white if I wanted to it could be white 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 but because this pillow here has touches of this um, what is this? It's like a dusky pink, I, I, I assume, I think. I think I got those ones from... I think I got them from at home, I think, if I remember correctly. But I decided to just break the white and keep uh, make it white, dust, 
white, pink, whatever color it is, and then white again, and then have the pillow in the center there. My Bible always sits on my bed. It's just one of those things. I prefer it that way. And um, the pillow is just the central focus there. I thought maybe to make it both pillows, we could try that. And then I'll keep it at one and then you guys will let me know which one looks better. But then I feel like if it's both pillows because they are fairly big, it's going to look weird. It really is going to look weird. So I prefer it this way. And then you've got the blanket which matches with those. I keep this here because some nights in, even though it's summer, some nights tend to be a little bit uh, colder. So um, that's, yeah. I just have that just as something to drape over if it's a little bit cold that evening or chilly. And yeah, so I, I really, oh, I love it. I feel like I love it. I cannot wait to sleep on these. I typically make the ones that I sleep on slightly darker as opposed to the ones that just sit for decorative purposes in the front there. But yeah, so these ones, these match with the... The, they go with the juve cover, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The next thing that I'm looking to change is my juve inner and make it those the, the thicker because this one is slightly older, so make it something more thicker, bouncier, maybe even slightly warmer as well. But we'll see, we'll see. Maybe we'll do that closer towards the winter time. So there's that junk on the floor there, which I need to move, take some of those to the guest bedroom, and then yeah, go take out my meat out of the oven. And I don't know, maybe I'll touch base later, maybe I won't, we'll see how it goes, okay? Okay. So, uh, I just took the meat out, which is great. Now I can pour myself a drink and relax. The video is currently uploading the first installment or first episode of Ask. Ask? Advice with cat. I'm a little bit delirious. Sorry, my bad. Um, but one thing that I wanted to show you, I was cleaning my spice rack this morning. And now if you're somebody who cooks regularly or you cook sem semi-regularly, like me, okay, you know how dirty spice racks can get. Mine was atrocious. I couldn't even show you the before, but I just wanted to show you how it looks now. It, it, it's neat and it's orderly for me. Um, at this point, I'm not looking to change it or add containers to it and all of that. I'm actually quite comfortable with how it looks now, but I'm gonna show you how it looks now because this morning, it was a sack of trash, <laughs> okay? I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, it was a mess, but I'm gonna show you how it looks now. So, so pretty much my spice rack is right next to my oven and my stove top, obviously. There's the meat in there, cooling, and then I'm going to take that out and wash it. Uh, but for the most part, this is how it looks now. It was a complete tip. I'm not even going to lie to you. The boxes of spices that haven't been opened yet are back there. And then my Woolies spices and herbs like garlic powder, coriander leaves, all of that. Uh, turmeric, cumin, paprika, all of that is there. And then these ones are the ones you've probably seen on... Um, what is this? Instagram. These are the ones that I picked up from... Um, which more is this one? Westpac. I picked these up from Westpac and I love them. These are the ones that I gravitate to mostly. And then sometimes I'll pick up some herbs and what have you. Inner Parman is here and then the slightly shorter ones are the Robertson's ones. And then things like beef stock and chicken stock I put in these glass containers. Normally I'll get Norox for beef stock and I'll get another brand for chicken stock. So I know that the one in the Norox uh, brand is, uh, in the Norox wrapping is chicken stock, uh, is beef stock and then the other one is chicken. And then the soups and things from your Royco and all of that I put in this container back here. I don't normally cook with soups to be honest. Um, that's why there's probably like three or four in there, nothing crazy. Baking stuff I put in this container here, I hardly ever bake. Again, uh, the, here's where you have things like vanilla essence, a caramel essence, all of that, and then baking powders here. I've got royal baking powder here and another baking powder there. <laughs> but anyway, and then down here is aromat and the spices that you normally see me using, the salt and pepper that you normally see me using. And that is pretty much my whole entire spice rack. 
I like it. I prefer that it's down there because these ones are shorter and that one is slightly longer. So it fits everything in there nicely. And then I just close it up and it, yeah, that's it. So that's just my little setup. I'm going to really just rest now, make myself a drink, uh, probably watch a couple of YouTube videos. The video is going to finish off editing now and relax and relax and actually just enjoy my mother's day because I did spend most of my mother's day pretty busy. But one thing that I have watched on Netflix is the girl and the woman from the window next door from the woman next door. Okay. Yeah. The one with Kirsten Bell. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I didn't like the girl in the window. Is it the woman in the window? The woman in the window. I didn't really like the book. Um, and I didn't really like the movie as well. So this one, I think, is the title is that play on that. Like the girl from the woman from the woman next door with the woman and the woman next door on Netflix. I don't know what it's called. I'll probably write it down here somewhere. That was brilliant. The twist took me out. Okay? When we found out who the killer was... It took me all the way out, but at the same time, it just seemed a little bit unrealistic for me. Um, yeah, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to spoil it or anything, but it just seemed a little bit unrealistic for me. If you've watched it already, you know exactly what I mean. Uh, yeah, so my sister told me to watch Tinder Swindler or the Tinder Swindler or something. That's probably something I might watch tonight while I have my dinner uh, and my drink and probably read much later on this evening on my soft new pillows i'm gonna test them out and i'll let you know how they go uh yeah that's pretty much it that's pretty much it i just want to switch off the camera for a little bit i've filmed twice already this week and we are only on wednesday so i think it's time for me to switch it off a little bit maybe i'll switch it back on tomorrow and yeah we'll talk to you then okay <laughs> So, good morning. I'm reading this book I told you about, Empty Houses. I need to get rid of this. It freaking pisses me off. It's written by a Mexican author, and her name is... Um, it's a translated read. And her name is Brenda Navarro, and it's translated by Sophie Hughes. And this first story, I'm 27 pages in, and this first story that I'm reading is of um, a woman whose child has recently disappeared. Her three-year-old her three -year -old child has disappeared, and she was at the park with the child. If I can tell you, I think within eight pages, I was already feeling some type of way about this child's disappearance about how I, like i feel like i'm in this woman's head right and it's her thoughts basically what we're reading is her thoughts how she feels towards her partner the father of her child her current partner and their other child who is not biologically hers but essentially for the most part how she feels about her disappeared child and how she blames herself how she blames others but there's this line that i just read right now which is so insane uh it, there's parts of this book that are written so well like i don't have my highlighter with me that's actually why i'm using my pencil but wow there's certain lines that are just incredible um and here uh she says you don't always seethe with hatred you don't always want to cry and occasionally you even crack a smile or find yourself laughing about something. That's the really dangerous one. Spontaneous laughter because it's the sudden moments of joy that just as suddenly pierce holes in your chest and lungs and then you have to remind yourself, breathe, breathe, breathe. So it's those sudden moments of joy that then remind her that, yo, you've got a kid that's missing and then, yeah then then she goes back to that you okay i'm gonna continue reading bye okay so i've just taken a shower and i'm going to be meeting up with my sister now for breakfast 
today is my turn to pick her up it seems like it's something we do quite a lot just like oh let's go let's have brunch let's have breakfast i mean earlier on this week we were at paul and today we're going to cafe Billaby, which is one of the other places that's got great food i might just actually get a pasta to go it is friday today so gonna go see my sister gonna go pick her up it's my turn to pick her up today let me just open up my blinds a little bit okay let us make our way to go see your fave and my fave i guess let's uh let's get out of this house yeah. so you need a little space yeah but oh, oh, is it because you can't be faithful but oh, oh, i hope she's cool unlike you you ain't ready for a girlfriend no oh, oh, cause you think i'll still you Keeping me a tell when you're too. I can't help but feel sympathetic. I do. You think you're bad, boy, but I feel bad for you. For my problems. 